Hi everyone, welcome to Raw Online and I am Dr. Somu from ENT. I am going to discuss today about the anatomy of the nasal septum which is going to be important for the undergraduate as well as postgraduates. When it comes to undergraduate in the ENT, you will definitely have a question on the nasal septum and 100 percent it is going to be part of your clinical case scenario. And so, you have to know everything about the nasal septum, its applied anatomy. So, let us start here today with the anatomy of the nasal septum and then few complications of the nasal septum and its applied anatomy. So, anatomy of the nasal septum. So, nasal septum starts with three parts. As you know, it is a part of your columnar septum, membranous septum and septum proper. As this picture shows you, you have the membranous septum which is much more anterior part and then you have your columnar septum and then you have the whole part of your proper nasal septum. Let us talk about each one in detail. So, coming to the columnar septum. Columnar septum is the anterior part as you see in this picture which is formed of the columella containing your medial crura of and your alar cartilage which is united together by a fibrous tissue covered on either side by the skin. So, this is the anteriormost part of your nasal septum. Coming to the membranous septum, membranous septum is nothing but a double layer of skin and it does not have any bony or a cartilaginous support. It lies between the columella and the caudal border of the septal cartilage. So, both the columnar and membrane part are freely mobile from side to side. So, you do not have any kind of an attachment of the cartilage or a bony part in the anterior part of the membranous septum. So, what is septum proper? The principle or the main constituents of a septum proper are you have your perpendicular plate of ethamoid, vomer and a septal cartilage. So, that is the anteriormost part that is called the quadrilateral cartilage. So, starting from the anterior to posterior you will have your membranous part, then you will have your cartilaginous part and then you will have your bony part. We do have some minor contributions from the crest of nasal bone, nasal spine of frontal bone, rostrum of sphenoid and crest of palatine and maxilla. Sometimes you do have some minor contribution from the anterior nasal spine of maxilla. So, these are all the minor contributions which you have from the part of the nasal septum. So, the major one will be your cartilage perpendicular plate of ethamoid followed by you will have your boma. So, let us take this picture. This is how the septum proper is formed by. So, as I said this forms the anteriormost that is your cartilages part will form the anteriormost part of the nasal septum which is nothing but your quadrilateral cartilage. Then you have a major contribution coming from the perpendicular plate of ethamoid and then you have your boma. And as we saw in the previous slide, you have your minor contributions like a crest from the sphenoid bone, a nasal crest of palatine bone, nasal crest of maxilla and then you have your anterior nasal spine. So, basically you have to know this picture in your mind and 100 percent you have to know it is formed by cartilage and bone and few minor contributions. So, the septal cartilage forms a portion between the right and the left nasal cavity. Basically, it provides a support to the tip and dorsum of the cartilaginous part of the nose. So, septal destruction or a disease can happen whenever you have an infection like your septal abscess or whenever you have a trauma or whenever you have a tuberculosis disease when your destruction or a perforation can happen in the septal cartilage or else it can be 
whenever you have an injury to the nasal cartilage by either excess removing of the septal cartilage during a submucosal resection surgery where you can have a depression of the anterior part of the nose or a drooping of the tip. So, the septal cartilage lies in a groove in the anterior edge of the omer and rests anteriorly on the anterior nasal spine. So, during trauma it may get dislodged from the anterior spine or from the omer causing a caudal septal deviation. Sometimes when you have a sharp angulation it can also form a sharp spur anteriorly. So, what is the blood supply of the nasal septum? So, the nasal septum is having a plenty of vasculature and you can see you can see a colored area which is of orange. So, that is the commonest area called as the littles area and one of the important point here is that is the commonest site of bleeding whenever you have any kind of an epistaxis anteriorly. So, what forms the blood supply? So, it is from the anterior arteries and then you have your posterior artery and then you have a major branch coming from the spinopalatine artery. It is otherwise called the artery of epistaxis. You have some contributions coming from the septal branch of the superior labial artery. So, the significance of this is it is an anastomotic area. So, when you have an anastomotic area and it is more in the antero inferior part of the cartilage either it can bleed whenever you have a nose picking or whenever you have an injury or whenever you have an uh, unknown epistaxis. So, this is the commonest site of nasal bleed otherwise called as a Kisselbach's area. So, what is the nerve supply of the nasal septum? The nerve supply of the nasal septum is you have mainly the anterior ethmoidal nerve that is a septal branch of the anterior ethmoidal nerve and then on the roof you have this olfactory nerves which comes in and then you have your nasopalatine nerves. So, these are the primary nerve supply for the nasal septum.